you can go get your real ID. And Mark is going to give us a little brief overview of what the real ID is like. Okay? Thank you, Representative. Um, as Representative Barnes said, my name is Mark Seaman. I am the Legislative Director at the Department of Revenue. Um, what I do, uh, uh, particularly during session, but even off session, is, is work with legislative issues that affect the department either on the motor vehicle or driver's license side or the taxation side. Uh, so I work with uh, Representative Barnes, worked last year with Representative Fraker um, on the issues that affect the department. I testify in front of committees and, and do that type of thing. Uh, I am also a very proud resident of uh, the 28th District and of Raycom. Uh, while I work in uh, Jefferson City five days a week, I drive down Monday morning, I come back on Friday, I uh, live here right in Raytown, and my kids graduated from Raytown, one of the Raytown schools. I'm not going to say which because I don't want to divide the crowd right now. Um, <laughs> Race out. Um, and, uh, and, and we've lived here since 2005. Um, so there may be some familiar faces in the room. I see a couple of people, uh, obviously, but the, 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 the mayor um, and, and others. So um, uh, it was really easy to say yes when Representative Barnes asked me to be at this forum. Um, and I got to spend a couple extra days in Raytown instead of going down to Jeff City this week. So, real ID. Um, just to take you back a little bit, and I won't do a lot of history, in 2005, however, the federal government passed the Real ID Act. And, and there's a lot of confusion about it. Um, you know, the name, Real ID, why is this real and my other ID wasn't. It's just the name, folks. Don't get all upset about the name. Um, but they passed a law that basically said that in order to access any federal facilities or federal, um, uh, federally uh, approved functions like flying, um, that she, the states needed to have an identifi identification card that met certain federal standards. There were 39, there are 39 federal standards that the Department of Revenue has to meet. Um, some of those are on the card itself, security features and other types of things. Others are things that you will do when you go in um, to get your next driver's license or non-driver's identification card. And other things are things that, that we'll do after the fact um, or during the process um, to make sure, basically they want to make sure, and this all happened after 9-11, that nobody has a identification, a state-issued identification in more than one state. They, they want to make sure that people who get identification should have that and that they aren't getting uh, fraudulent or multiple identifications. So that's the whole reason behind the program. It took Missouri a while to get here. Um, there was a law passed in 2009 that said the state could not comply with Real ID. That law was finally changed in 2017 um, when the gentleman here next to me and the General Assembly voted on a bill finally allowing the Department of Revenue to um, do the process. And we said from the beginning it would take 18 months, and it is almost exactly 18 months from the day that law went into effect. Uh, and as Representative Barnes said, we will start issuing um, Real ID compliant uh, identification starting next week. So here's what you need to know. First off, you do not need Real ID identification for any state function at all. Uh, if you are just going to drive, if you are just going to show your ID to go into a bar, if you are just going to show your ID to get into you know, some other facility, doctor's office, or someplace else, um, you do not need a compliant ID. Um, the only reason that you need to get a compliant ID is if you are going to a federal facility, military base, uh, federal courthouse, nuclear power plant, anybody planning to go to a nuclear power plant that's on the list, just FYI, um, or if you're going to fly on federally sanctioned airlines, which is the big one for most people. Um, so you would need a real ID, compliant ID to do that. So. The next time that you go in to get your driver's license updated or your non-driver ID updated if you don't have a driver's license, you're going to be given an option. Do you want to get a compliant ID or not? You have a choice. You don't have to get it. You can get it if you want to. If you get a compliant ID, then you're going to have to bring with you documentation that has your, um, that has your uh, a proof of residency in the United States, so birth certificate or a passport that proves that you're a resident of the United States, a citizen of the United States. You'll also need to bring proof of your address. Two, two things that will do proof of address. Um, one of those will be, uh, could be a, a voter ID card, it could be a utility bill, it could be a mortgage bill, all different types of things you could use. 
and then you will need to bring your social security card. Now, I will note, in the past, you could just walk up to the clerk in the license office bureau, and you could say your social security number out loud. Federal standards say you are now going to have to bring in your card. So if you don't have it, look for it or get a new one from the Social Security Administration. When you do that, you will, um, uh, they will then, the License Office Bureau, uh, the DMV, will scan that information uh, and that will be stored um, in a computer system that is offline, not connected to the internet or anything like that, so it'll be safe um, um, from any hacking or anything like that. Um, and then you will be issued a driver's license or a non-driver's ID card that has a little uh, gold circle with a white star in the middle of it, and that will show that it is a real ID compliant card. That's it. It's that simple. You'll have a choice. You ask, however, what happens if I need to fly um, before my renewal period comes up? You know, my license isn't uh, up until 2022, I think, right? Because um, there are six-year licenses unless you're over 70, and then it's a three-year license. Um, and the answer is you can go in and you can get a real ID. You'll get what we call a duplicate license. Everything will stay the same. Your expiration date will stay the same. All the information on the card will stay the same. All we will do is we will issue a duplicate of that license with the uh, gold circle and white star. Um, and you can get that for free. The license itself will be free. The legislation uh, that was passed said that we could not charge extra for that. There will be some processing fees. That's how the local office gets paid. So if you want the right town license office to stay in your in business, um, you, you'll want to give them their dollar fifty or three fifty or whatever the processing fee is. Uh, but there's no charge for the card itself. Um, so it's pretty much that simple. Here's the real big thing that I need everybody to understand. Um, once we start issuing these, the, gov the, the federal government will certify Missouri as being compliant, and then your current ID that you have in your pocket or your purse right now will be good through October 1st of 2020, so more than a year from now, about 18 months from now. You do not need to rush in and get a compliant license. Not everybody needs to go to the Raytown Bureau on Monday morning, please. <laughs> Is there anybody from the Raytown Bureau here? I'll say, don't, don't, don't all rush in. You do not need to rush in. Your current car is going to be just fine um, through October 1st of 2020. So take your time, get it when you want to, get it when you think you need to, but there's no reason to rush and get it. So that's real ID. Um, I want to real quick keep, keep you on a couple of other topics while we're here. Uh, but I'll make these much shorter um, on the driver's license uh, side and uh, motor vehicle side specifically. You may have noticed we have new plates. Uh, they are plates celebrating the bicentennial. Um, those plates were um, uh, authorized and mandated by statute. Um, there was a statute that was passed. We have to re-up the plates every 10 or 12 years. Uh, if, if, you, if you're like me, see, once you start working for uh, revenue, you start looking at plates and you see all the ones that are flaking and falling apart and you can't see the letters anymore and you see expired tags and all kinds of other stuff. But um, uh, every 10 or 12 years we do it anyway. This was after 10 years, so it wasn't that much in a hurry. Um, but the plate does celebrate the, the bicentennial. Um, when you go in, there's a slight increase on the processing fee. There's an extra dollar thirty-eight per plate that you'll have to pay. That's because we had to replace every single plate in the state, basically. Um, and so it's slightly more expensive just this time around. Um, uh, and then the next time around, it won't be uh, a, a, as expensive anymore. Um, so I think they're pretty sharp looking plates. I think they're pretty cool. They look good. Um, uh, and so uh, as you have your plate come due over the next two years, you'll be getting one of those plates. Real quick on the taxation side, it is tax season. Uh, everybody is aware of that. Um, the, the two things I would point out, we did get a new IT system last year and it's working great. It's helping us immensely uh, in getting stuff processed. Uh, uh, and uh, for 98% of the things that we do, it's working great. Um, like any new IT system, or 2% of the things we do, uh, it's caused some, some minor errors. Um, one of those, if you've applied for a property tax credit, we're running a little bit behind on property tax credit refunds, um, and um, we're catching up as fast as we can. Uh, if you um, are concerned and you want to call into our numbers, you can, uh, uh, or call into the representative's office and then he'll forward it to me and we'll work on it, but we're doing the best we can to, um, to get that done. And then finally, um, you may have heard some, um, some noise about uh, withholding changes due to the federal tax changes. 
Um, it, I'm sure you're aware that um, the federal government passed a sweeping 1,100-page tax bill a year and a half ago. One of the things that did is it kind of changed how withholding works. How many people here are still wage earners, if you, if you don't mind raising your hand, as opposed to Social Security or pensions or something like that? Wage earners, okay. Um, if, if you're a wage earner, you fill out a W-4 and you tell people, you tell your employer how many allowances you want to take. Um, that doesn't work the same way it worked before um, because of the changes to the federal law and the fact that they removed exemptions from federal law. They doubled the standard deduction, but they removed individual exemptions to balance that out. And exemptions are what those allowances on your W-4 kind of dent against, okay? I highly encourage you, if you are working and you have a W-4, to go get a new W-4. There is a new W-4 for the state of Missouri and for federal government um, for 2019. Highly, highly encourage you to do that. If you go to our website, which is dor.mo.gov, there's a calculator on the website that you can use to help you understand how to fill out your W-4. Um, but it doesn't work the same way it used to. And for many people, particularly those who like to get a big refund, what they'll find is they're not going to get a big refund anymore. They'll get a smaller refund now. And that's because uh, it's kind of balanced out. It's balanced out where it wasn't as balanced out before. So if you have any questions about that, you can call our tax line. I don't that. If you have notes, 573-751-7200. Um, or again, and I, I don't mean to put it all in the representative's office, but I do constituent services for his offices and, for, and, and all the other reps' office. When they get a call about DOR, they call me. Um, so if you call him, he said it, it's me. Uh, so I'm, I'm not putting work on him, it's not coming back, trust me. Um, uh, so if, if that might be the easiest way for a lot of you if you have a question about any of the things I mentioned after the fact um, to deal with that. So with that, I'm more than happy to take questions. Motor vehicle, driver's license, tax, whatever you'd like to talk about. Expired passport work? An expired passport does not work. Is a passport equal to the real ID? A passport actually is equal. A passport is a real ID document. Um, so you can use that to fly in the plane uh, domestically and you don't have to worry about it. Great, thanks. What's, yes. the, what's the number that you uh, have, that you have for the place that you want to get your place changed over? Because like, you have personal place and you want to uh, I don't have the phone number for the local license office bureau, which is where you want to go, but it, it's up on, um, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just, yeah, it's up on 63rd and, uh, uh, yeah. Great. Right. No, no, I mean, I mean yeah, right on topic. That's where it's, yeah. Up by Wendy's. Yes, sir. To get a duplicate ID, do I need to provide all of that other identification? Yes, sir. You still will need to bring in all this. To get a duplicate ID was the question. Do you still need to bring in all the documents? And the answer is yes, because for federal purposes, we have to scan them all in. Now, I will say this, too. Once we scan them in, we can keep them by federal law 10 years, which means that next time you come back, or if you're a senior, the next two times you come back, you won't need to bring those documents again. We'll still have them. Um, um, but again, a lot of this is federal requirement. We're just doing what the federal government tells us to do. Yes, ma'am. Uh, for the car license, do you still do that through the mail and get the new license? Plate? Yes, you can. If you so, the question was, can you still do a car license through the mail and get the new plate? Any at any time, instead of mailing you tags, they will mail you a new plate um, uh, and tags. Um, also, you should know that you can do your registration of your car online. Uh, particularly here in Jackson County and, and in about 95 other counties. Um, if, if you've not done that, it is easy and painless and very simple. If you have access to the internet, you go to our website and you just need to have um, your insurance information and you need to have the inspection uh, page with a number on top and you put that number in there um, and you can do it online uh, and get it mailed to you without a problem. So uh, we have more and more people doing that online. And there's a bill running through the legislature this year that would allow some people um, going forward to do their driver's license online as well. So um, things are definitely going to be moving as we get down the road further and further to, to being able to. I mean, our vision is that 20 years from now or 30 years from now, these dang millennials will, will want to just push one button on their phone and get it delivered. And, 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 we're, and we're driving towards that. I mean, we, that's going, you know, it's going to be something that we're looking at. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Through August 2020, though, you can still fly on your current ID. October 2020. October 2020. You can still fly on your current ID through October 2020. Yes, sir. 
Can you use your transfer? No, you need your actual Social Security card um, uh, this time around. So, by the way, I've got my original Social Security card. Anybody else still have their original Social Security card? A lot of people. It, it, it go, if you're old like me, I'm older than I look. If you're old like me, look at the bottom of it. It says not for identification purposes. Uh, exactly. Uh, well, we blew right past that, didn't we? Uh, yes, ma'am. As far as the real said, you don't have to have it until Yes, your, your current ID will get you in federal buildings, even a nuclear power plant, if that's where you'd like to go, or on an airplane um, through October 2020. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much. I'll stay uh, and be here if anybody has one-on-one -on -one questions after. I have not been in the Raytown office. Uh, they're supposed to have a QR code posted. Uh, I have not been there to check to see if they have or not. Um, that was legislation we worked on last year with the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Commission to change the designation, um, and we were happy to have that legislation. Right, right. Wonderful. Thank you. I just want to make sure that somebody I'll have one of our compliance people check out and make sure they've got that QR code up.